Since 2003, health practitioners, scientists and noise experts from around the world have recorded a common set of health problems among people living near industrial scale wind turbines. Numerous symptoms are reported when wind turbines are sited too close to people's homes and workplaces. These vary from person to person and are dependent on wind direction and weather conditions. Tinnitus, that's ringing in the ears, dizziness, headaches, poor sleep, anxiety, um, depression. Headaches, wanting to vomit all the time, pains in the chest, blood pressure. You go to can't sleep, got sleeping tablets, do nothing for you. Really bad chest pains of a night. Um, and a lot of blood noses, like I'd be asleep and just wake up and, and my nose would be bleeding. And um, it's just pretty scary stuff. And I developed the most severe headache I'd ever experienced. Even though I live three and a half kilometres away, they affect me at night and my blood pressure rises while I'm asleep and I wake up with rapid heartbeat and things like that cardiovascular events and cerebrovascular events and you know, one's mortality is increased with sleep problems. Symptoms have been consistently reported in Australia up to 10 kilometres from homes. Most symptoms disappear when people leave the area or when the turbines are switched off. I went to the doctor two days later, my blood pressure had to return completely back to normal and the turbines hadn't been going. I remember there was like five days straight and they just, it was dead calm, they weren't turning and we were just back to normal, it was just great. And then you get up the next morning and bang, they're, they're going again and you just sink into depression and you start feeling the same effects just come back. Placing wind turbines too close to homes has a negative impact beyond personal health issues. Over 20 Australian rural families, some who have been on the land for decades, have been forced to sell or even abandon their homes because of serious ill health caused by wind turbines. After speaking to our family doctor, uh, his suggestion was the only way to fix the problem was to move from our family home. So that was it for us, we had to move. I've had contractor get ill stripping crop this last year. I've got a shearing shed here that's only a kilometre away. Um, so if you've got staff in the shearing shed, you're responsible for them and it's a, it's a worry. It's the way the wind farm companies go about their, their way of signing up residents and that does concern because that, that that's, does divide small communities. One farmer would be given the information and signed up as a potential uh, to have wind farms on their property but they had to sign a confidentiality clause which meant that they couldn't talk to their neighbours Wind turbines emit both audible and inaudible noise and have various electromagnetic impacts. While there is some research on how sound and vibration energy affects humans, there is very little research specifically examining the effects of wind turbines. We still have a lot to learn about exactly why they are making people sick. I think firstly it makes sense to site the wind turbines as far away as possible from where people live. And you know, how far is far enough? I don't know the answer to that. I think we need to establish some research to try to get data to sort this out. And now, the issue is in the national spotlight, with the Australian Federal Senate inquiry making important recommendations in June 2011. This includes that the noise standards should include appropriate measures to calculate the impact of low frequency noise and vibrations indoors at impacted dwellings that further consideration be given to the development of policy on separation criteria between residences and wind farm facilities and that the Commonwealth Government initiate as a matter of priority thorough, adequately resourced epidemiological and laboratory studies. Despite the Senate inquiry, no action has yet been taken by the federal or state governments to properly implement these recommendations. And while nothing is being done, Plans for even more developments across rural Australia are going ahead at an exponential rate. This is not an issue confined to one resident, one town or one country. It's a growing health issue on a global scale. As a matter of urgency, the problem must be seriously researched by independent experts following the Federal Senate recommendations. And until research findings emerge, 
any new turbine placement should be at least 10 kilometres from homes. It's just simple, isn't it? Like they're just, they're obviously just not meant to be where people live and in certain circumstances where people work. So we were just standing out here reporting when um, this man came out and um, stopped by to ask us why the wind turbines weren't turning and he himself is a resident out here amongst the wind turbine array. Um, so have you been affected at all by these wind turbines? My family has. Um, they have made my wife very sick. She has trouble walking now. Her joints ache. Uh, we sold off our cattle. They weren't doing well. Our chickens stopped laying eggs and we're planning on moving, we're being forced out. Is there anything else you want to say about, you know, the wind turbines and things like that? Um, we feel really bad that the county didn't um, look after the people that were here. Apparently they got bought off politically or something. All the objections that were brought forth, they just brushed aside. And we always felt there was a ulterior motive why they were here, but you know, without a lot of money to dig into it and, and legal aid, there's no way you'll ever find out the truth. The way they wrote the contract, they can turn around and walk away and the county's stuck with trying to get rid of these things. We've also heard that the liquids that they use in these things pollute the ground um, and there's no way of getting rid of that too. The ground's contaminated for years afterwards. I don't think you're going to have a chance with Xterra. I think they're going to take their money and run if they haven't already. And then the county's stuck with the cleanup and, you know, they won't be able to do anything either. These things are already falling apart. Um, there's patchwork done all along the sides of these things. And there's been numerous blades and, and repairs that have been having to be done on these wind turbines. I appreciate InfoWars coming out and looking into this and hopefully they'll make uh, the public more aware of what's going on and maybe there'll be some resolution and I hope it stops some of these uh, wind farms from spreading to other parts of uh, other communities that will affect the health of other people. Thank you very much. I'm here with Joe Cobb and his son. They are both residents out here in Callahan, Colorado. So Joe, how's it been living amongst the wind turbines? Torturous. Absolutely torturous. It's just something that's just every day. It's just berated and beat on every day. You can't get away from it. And now that they're down, we don't know what to think. You guys do have livestock and animals. How have your animals been? I mean, I know you said that a lot of them um, have actually passed and you've had a lot of problems. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we've lost 16 animals in the past 18 months uh, since they turned these things on. We've had two blind ducks. We've got another one that's going blind. We've had deformities and baby goats, and uh, we've had even a, a baby horse that was uh, aborted at full term, and we don't have any explanation why. But we've been doing it for 30 years, and we've never had these problems. And what about you? What type of uh, symptoms and health problems do you experience from the wind turbines? It's been exhaustion is a good way to describe it. It is, you can sleep, sleep eight hours every night, you wake up, you're just tired. You stay tired. And it, it doesn't go away. And mental clarity is a good way to describe it. It's like you're in a fog. I know that um, your mom has had health problems from it too. Um, what does she typically experience? It's been tiredness, headaches. It's just, it's just been mental exhaustion. Yeah. Just straight up mental exhaustion. And she's been fighting this every day. She's only been away from it for two weeks since they came on. And you can just see it in her. I mean, the get up and go has got up and left. And she just fights it every day to get, take care of the animals and feed them and keep them going while she's watching them suffer and die as well. So it's really been hard on her. Do you think that the county commissioners are actually going to do something to turn these things off? Well, that's the only hopes that we have at this point. Uh, we've done our best to go before them and present our case. And we're hoping that at least they can give us a little bit of due credit. Uh, they, they talk about being uh, respectful of them. They need to be respectful of us as well. Do you think that's a little bit of a victory that Nextera had to admit that, even though they tried to then say that the infrasound wasn't going to cause health problems? Well, it was an absolute victory uh, because all, all the times before I've talked to Nextera and I've talked to David Gill, 
personally on the phone, and he told me infrasound exists, but turbines don't produce it. And so I was fully prepared at the meeting to give them proof that infrasound does exist, but they came along prior to that and admitted to it. So now we just got to get the health aspect of it uh, out there, and all we can do is send out the information to the Board of County Commissioners and hope for the best. The wind turbine company only did admit that the wind turbines did create infrasound after residents out here, including myself, all kind of chipped in and paid for an acoustical engineer to put equipment out on various properties out here to test for infrasound. And it was once that acoustical engineer found the presence of infrasound and that data was given over to the county only then did Nextera admit to the infrasound being present on non-participating landowners property.